I decided to try Final Fantasy XIV in 2024, and honestly, so should you. A longtime supporter and friend of the channel, Galactic, had waited many years to eventually get me into this game to give it an honest go. And honestly, it was so much better than I had ever expected. But was it worth it? Let's get into it. Without a doubt, something that you have certainly have heard or have seen from the Final Fantasy XIV player base of why the game is so good is, of course, its story. The story is possibly one of the crowning achievements of the game. People have gone in great depths and detail talking about why this game's story is so unforgettable. So I decided that I was going to put it to the test. My beginning and end was the beginning of the game all the way until the end of A Realm Reborn, or 2.0. For those of you who are unaware, essentially they completely scrapped the base game 1.0 because it wasn't up to their standards or what have you and within a year they completely turned the game around into what it is today which is impressive in its own right what's even cooler is that they went ahead and wrote it into the story they made a whole big deal of how this happened and how we got to 2.0 it wasn't just like they turned off the lights and they turned everything back on there was more to it. Now, albeit, I would be remiss to say that the story doesn't necessarily go super fast, especially early into the game. The first five to ten levels, it's a lot of fetch these, go here, do that, fight a couple of bad guys that are essentially pushovers. Again, it's the start of an MMORPG that has been out for a number of years. It's not too far. It's not uncommon to have that type of experience. And to also put, most of the story, most of what you will be doing, is a lot of reading. There's a lot of, lot of reading, like a lot more than I expected. Now, that isn't always going to be someone's cup of tea. It certainly wasn't mine going into it. However, the story writing and the reading that you would do essentially sets you up for the big emotional payoffs later down the road, the excitement the uh, sadness, every other emotion that you can possibly think of within that time frame comes a lot from reading the story text and the quest text and understanding why we are here and what we are doing. I do believe that's something that held me off from actually enjoying Final Fantasy XIV for the longest time is because I had heard that there was a lot of reading and I, I didn't want to read. I mean, even when I was making content purely on Guild Wars 2, I didn't read a lot of the texts that were put out there. I just kind of essentially skipped through all the way what I could. I mean, luckily they had a lot of voice acting towards the end, so it, it made it a lot easier to understand what was going on because it was more of a movie. But reading the text early on into the story for Final Fantasy XIV was a major hump that I had to get over for me to start really enjoying this game. But having said that, it is a good payoff. The more that you read, the more that you understand of why you were here, what you were doing, why this is important, the better the game gets overall. Like personally, I love the fact that eventually I got to a point where I understood everything that was happening. I understood the callbacks. I could make my own guesses about what is going to happen in the story. Things like that, that I was able to do by reading the text, understanding what was happening. So yes, the story can be a little bit slow to start, but I guarantee you it certainly picks up and it picks up very, very fast only after a little bit of playtime. So hang in there. If you are interested into the story and you uh, like having a wild roller coaster ride, Final Fantasy is definitely going to be a game for you. Definitely recommend. So the classes in Final Fantasy XIV are all fairly unique. Each one of them has their own specific weapons, and there's really no intermingling in between the two. However, the class experience for each one of them isn't as, we'll say, locked in or we'll say dedicated as most MMORPGs. So in other MMOs, you might have to create five, six, seven different characters all fitting a different class. I want a warrior, I want a paladin, I want a elementalist, you know, things like these all the way across the line. Your one character can essentially be every single job, which is the classes here in the game, just by unlocking the extra content. So you start out with your one choice at the beginning. For me, it was a Marauder. I chose a Marauder. If I didn't like how the Marauder was playing, I can go and unlock the Lancer, which is a spear wielding class. And that is available to me basically from the start. I can make this option. I can make this choice to go and do something else 
and I don't have to create a new character. I don't have to backtrack on everything. I will have to do some quests to unlock the job, but all in all, that's that's pretty fair, given the sense that, you know, some people might not want to go through the entirety of the story again on a different character just to unlock that new class. I just want to play my character who's already done a lot of the work and just get what I need. That's a beautiful thing. That is something I loved about Final Fantasy XIV. What's interesting to note is that all of the base classes evolve essentially into something later down the road. So I went with the Marauder, which is an axe wielding essentially fighter. And then I can unlock the Warrior, which is essentially the next step up. It unlocks additional abilities, additional defensives. There's a whole quest line that's tied to it, which is incredible. One thing that I loved about Final Fantasy is that it wasn't just going and visiting the class trader, right? I didn't have to go and just talk to someone and he taught me things for an exchange of gold. There's a story behind what I am doing and why I am doing it. Like how I am unlocking these skills and these armor pieces and all that just by playing along with this side story, which is another aspect that kind of ties into my first bit where I talked about the story is that it offers a level of immersion that isn't just, you know, okay, I hit a certain level, I paid the gold, give me. Or, you know, like, there, there's more to it. There's a little bit more of, we'll say, engagement versus just sitting there and saying, yep, give give me the good stuff, I, I did it, thank you. Now, Final Fantasy XIV does the Holy Trinity of classes, so tank, healer, DPS. Uh, the Marauder, the warrior that I chose, is a tanking class. It's a two-handed axe tanking class. I like the idea of getting back to this now, in contrast to like what I saw with like Guild Wars 2, where it wasn't necessarily clearly defined, where I had a, a, a dedicated healer, and that's all the healer did, and a dedicated tank, and that's all I did, or a dedicated DPS. I mean, in Guild Wars 2, a lot of it was, you know, essentially just stack on each other. The support also acted as a tank because they were holding the boss's aggro. So there's there's a lot of play there that I kind of missed. I personally, I do enjoy tanking. I think it's a lot of fun. But seeing that in Final Fantasy XIV is one of the reasons that, I, I mean, I picked the Marauder just because I was like, oh, an Axe Wielder, oh, that's cool. But I've thoroughly enjoyed my pick because I like the giant axe. I like the swinging of the axe. So that's something that I, I will definitely add as a note is that they do have the Holy Trinity and it is very well fleshed out. However, everyone is responsible for DPS, including tanks, including healers. So even the healers, when they are doing all their healing and trying to keep everyone up, their downtime is to damage as much as they can because the longer a boss is alive, the more damage that you will eventually take. So uh, we got to follow Joe Cat's ABCs, always be casting. So in this regard, class experience was fantastic. I loved the diversity of the classes. And one thing that I plan on doing is actually unlocking a Dragoon, which is essentially the Lancer's evolved form. But I have to go become a Lancer and learn all the skills all, all the way through and then unlock the Dragoon. So there's a bit more that goes into it. Now, I will say one thing that I I was a little, I will say, sad about, or I, I shouldn't say sad, or that I missed, was the idea of uh, your own character build. Personally, I like playing games where I have a character build, where I can choose what skills I want and, you know, what traits I want to be good at. So, you know, I want to be more better at defenses or, you know, I want to have better overall healing, things like that. I personally like that, and that was not found here in Final Fantasy, at least in A Realm Reborn. I can't necessarily hammer them too hard on that point, really. I enjoy that aspect, but there was other aspects about the game that kind of compensated it. So it was something I noted, not necessarily something that would stop me. But all in all, the class experience is fantastic, and it's something that I highly recommend. Like, they do classes very, very well, or jobs very, very well in this game, and, and it's something that I, I would recommend to anyone. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about combat. Combat in MMOs, let's just set the record straight. Usually early on for like the first five to 10 levels is essentially a three button simulator. You got three buttons and that's all you do. And people praise you, oh my goodness, he's a great warrior. It's like I swung an ax. Like, it's really not that difficult. But the idea of it is that it is meant to be slow. And I made note of that, as, especially as I was starting out in Final Fantasy XIV, is that it was very, very slow. Very, very slow. And 
I think like the global cooldown, which I'm used to it being like a second or less, was it felt like it was longer. And I think it has something to maybe to do with weapon swing. I, I never quite figured that out. But the idea of it is, is that it was slow. And I had to get over that hump that, okay, I'm starting out. I don't have a whole lot of abilities. There's a lot of downtime. I can't expect it to be kind of like an ARPG where within 10 levels, I can have six different skills and be pressing all the buttons and spamming everything. I, that, that's an unfair comparison. I think one thing that really, really caught my eye was essentially seeing how the combat evolved over time. The combat from like level 15 to level 30 was drastically different. When I got to level 30, I had a number of different skills. When I'm engaging with, say, a dungeon boss or, or mobs in the dungeon, there's multiple mitigations that I had to put out because I was kind of playing the tank job. And the idea of me being able to dodge these abilities, use my mitigation, and essentially play an out, it picked up very, very quickly. The first five to 10 levels was very, very slow. And again, it's an MMORPG. I can't necessarily fault them for this. But I will say that that is something that you can expect, especially if you were starting out. Now, I picked the Marauder, which is one of the tanking jobs that are here in Final Fantasy. I don't know what the difference would be for like, for example, a, a black mage, which has a joke of uh, being one of the slower casters and heavy hitters, but it's just slow casting. I haven't had any experience with it, something I, I probably look into later. But in my experience, it, the combat starts very, very slow. But by the end of it, I mean, heck, even on stream, some of the trials that I've been doing, there's multiple buttons that I have to press. There's certain combos that you have to put together, which essentially like add different elements to your combat rotation as you were pressing them. So, for example, for the, the warrior, you have heavy swing, maim, and then storm's path one, two and three. If you use them in that correct order, Storm's Path will generate rage. It will also heal you a little bit and deal more damage. And that's cool. That's like kind of like a little mini game that you have to play on top of all these other moving pieces. So the combat does pick up and it becomes very, very engaging very quickly. Starting out for the first, like I would even say like 5, 10, 15 levels, it's going to be, it's going to be minor. You're barely going to notice it, but hang in there. All I will say is hang in there. Now, let's talk about the leveling experience. The leveling experience in Final Fantasy XIV was honestly really not that noticeable, uh, if I'm to be honest. Like, there wasn't like a dedicated thing where I sat down and I was like, oh, I need to get to level 17, level 18, or anything like that. It was essentially, I, I stayed with the MSQ, which is the main scenario quest, which is the main story, as well as doing some of my Marauder Warrior job specific quests. And going through those one, two, like I, I found myself being over leveled. I want to say two, three, four levels higher than what was recommended for the MSQ. And I do know that there has been like some level type squish or experience squish where that, that is common, where you'll be over leveled just by doing that. So you don't necessarily have to do any of the extra side quests, but I never really thought about the leveling experience or, or how quickly I was leveling while I was doing the story. I was just playing the story. I was just focusing on the different details there and working my way through. I never had to sit down and focus, oh, I need to get to level 25 tonight to unlock this, that, or the other. Like, I just kept going along with the story and, and having fun. So I, I wouldn't say that the leveling experience isn't necessarily, like, it's bad. It feels like it's very quick. And especially if you were doing other outside content uh, outside of the MSQ, you might see it go a little bit faster. Now, I will say that, uh, I, now that since I've hit 50 and I've been doing the other extracurricular things in and around a realm reborn after the main story, I will say that there has been a significant slowing. I don't level as quickly, but again, I also don't think that I will be getting as much experience until I hit the next expansion, which is Heavensward. But what's really cool and something that I absolutely loved about Final Fantasy was the idea of their level sync. So essentially when you join a specific duty, which is like your own private instance or a dungeon or what have you, whatever you end up getting into, you have the capability of level syncing, which essentially shrinks you down to whatever level is required for that specific dungeon and it keeps you at that minimum. So even if Galactic joined me at level 90, he would be shrunk down to level 50 for that particular dungeon. That also means that all the skills that he has past 50 
essentially are removed. Now, I think this is pretty cool. It's a great way to keep older content essentially evergreen because you can go back and try things on level sync and have the same kind of difficulty that you would if you were that level already. You're not necessarily going in through a older piece of content with the latest gear and uh, from the latest end game expansion and absolutely devastating. No, you are relatively speaking within that range. Now in like the dungeons and, and some of the trials, it didn't really feel like that was even the, the biggest deal. And most things were a cakewalk, but there were some things that actually were very difficult because we were all level synced, which I, I really re appreciate this feature because again, it's essentially playing the game as it was intended to be played at that particular time. Not coming back, you know, super, you know, high level and high geared a couple of months later and cruising through everything. Really, really enjoyed that aspect. Now, if you are going to play an MMORPG, you have to expect that there are going to be other players. I mean, massively multiplayer online role playing game, MMORPG. Y you would expect there to be tons and tons of people. And in Final Fantasy 14, there's a crap load of them. Now, albeit, I probably had a bit of a skewed experience because i streamed my game i had a, a quite i had a posse i had a bunch of different people following me through the journey not necessarily helping but just watching just hanging out because they enjoy the game which is, again my experience might be a little bit different but if we look at like limsa lominsa where the main city hub is there's tons and tons of people there L lots of them and they were all there essentially just like hanging out most of them probably afk um, but most of them were there hanging out and just being engrossed into the world. Now, I even ran into a number of people out in my uh, initial journeys in and around Eorzea. And what was really, really cool was that it felt like th this was a living world. It felt like there was people coming in, joining in some of these fates. I would see some people, we would just wave. There's like these interactions that I have. And the community here is absolutely great. Even before I posted my first video, before anyone in the Final Fantasy community even really knew who I was, I did even talk to a handful of people, especially in Limsa Lamensa, and I had interactions. I had people like respond to me, and many of them were were very very kind. You know, of course you you get the occasional troll, but you get that anywhere. I I thoroughly enjoyed the community here in this game, and now as I've streamed more and created more content and more videos. I've seen that community grow, not only within like my CDG cult, it's basically what I'm calling it, but the people around have really engaged not only with me, but with each other. There's more interactions between those. It's been incredibly welcoming and, and friendly, and it's something that I absolutely love. Now, I won't say that like I haven't experienced that type of thing before. So in Guild Wars 2, my character's name is Caffeinated Dad. And when I was out and about and people would see me, I would usually get a wave or someone would say, hey, I love your stuff. Thank you. Or, you know, like you're a big troll. It happens. But the idea of it is, is that even in the main city of Lion's Arch in Guild Wars 2, you would still see tons of people. You go to a world boss or a meta boss train and you would see tons and tons of people like there was this breathing world. And I saw that carry over here in Final Fantasy 14. And I haven't even gotten to the end game. I haven't even gotten to. Uh, essentially where everyone uh, is kind of holed up until dawn trail so i will say it is very very cool to see this aspect and see the amount of people that have been here something i really enjoyed now something that i wanted to talk about especially in the realm of final fantasy 14 is the monetization what is the monetization structure so it is a subscription based game however there is a free trial basically up until the latest content i think there's like uh, one or two expansions ahead of it so you can play through A Realm Reborn, which is the base game. You can play through Heaven's Word and then Stormblood. And I believe for Shadowbringers, you do have to start paying a monthly sub and then into Endwalker, where we currently are. The idea of having so much content and so much of the game for free is incredible. I can't, I can't understand why people wouldn't at least even give the game a try for the idea of a free trial. Now, I have been told that the second that you pay for anything, say, for example, there's uh, a cool mount that you want to purchase. The second you purchase that, man, that mount, you have to start paying the subscription. The trial is over, which I can understand that. And personally, that's why like, I haven't made any payments. I'm still on the trial account. 
and I probably will be on the trial account up until I have to actually pay for the content that I'm doing. But even then, how many hours have I gotten? I mean, at the time of this review, I've done 50 hours of content and haven't paid a dime. You can't really beat that kind of payment model. And then after that, the subscription fee is only $15 a month. So if we're looking at it truly in that sense of, okay, well, you know, I have to pay this money for a subscription. How many years did I play World of Warcraft and barely played it? Like, it, it's, again, I, I can't fault the game for having a subscription cost just because there's so much that you can do in this game. And I, I personally, I love it. Now, there is a shop and you can go ahead and purchase like, mostly cosmetic things and, you know, uh, uh, things that help your character look cooler or an interesting mount. But the idea of it is, is that I never felt like I needed to play that or purchase those things so that I could have an elevated step in the game. Like, oh, my character levels up 10 times faster or, you know, my character's power level goes like that. Nothing like that. It's purely cosmetic if you would like. And again, it's optional. That's the best part. So is Final Fantasy worth your time? Was it worth me playing 50 hours and going through? Short? Yes, absolutely. There is so many intricacies within this game that I was not aware of until I jumped in feet first. And I think that's something that a lot of players look at and they say, oh, well, you know, I, I don't want to have to go through the bad to get to the good. A lot of people have joked that A Realm Reborn is the slowest part of the story. And again, it's an older MMO. That base game is older. So the idea of getting to the good parts at the end yeah, you're going to have to work for it, but what in any MMORPG are you given immediately just for that instant gratification? You have to work for these things. And honestly, it didn't even really feel like work. Like once the story got the hooks into me, like I was just trying to figure out what what was going to happen next. And then I was uh, being highlighted all these different features as I went through. So yes, I necessarily didn't care, honestly that it was is slower or quote unquote, the slower part there, it, it picked up very fast for me. And it was something that I was not expecting. And I feel like that's something that a lot of players who are on the outside, who've never tried Final Fantasy 14, and I was one who would look at it and say, mm, I don't want to have to get to level 50 for the game to get good. Or I don't want to have to do this for the game to get good. I just want it to be immediately as good as it is in my head. And I feel like that's kind of like the killer. Like, if you don't have these super high expectations with anything, not just Final Fantasy, you're going to have a heck of a lot better time. And Final Fantasy is a perfect a perfect idea of this. I told Galactic that I would give him the the time, I would play 10 hours, and then we'll, we would see what happened. And look where we are now. Uh, the game is fantastic, and it is 100% worth your time. Not only for the customization of your character, but the flexibility of the classes, the story that hooks you in, and not even that, it, it it's an emotional roller coaster. There, even if you're doing the side content, there are certain things that are like, wow, this is a lot of fun. This is really funny. What what's happening here? I just recently got into the Hildebrand quests, and they're hilarious. But then you have the serious moments, which are tied to the main story quest, or the you know the sad backstory that you hear from some of the characters just by reading. There's so many different elements that go in, and this is just the base game. This is just a Realm Reborn. This isn't even any of the expansions where progressively, apparently, they have gotten better. And it's something I'm going to get into. The idea of it is, is that this game is going to be worth your time just because it has a unique charm to it that I feel like a lot of games are missing nowadays. A lot of games feel very regimented. They feel like your next steps are always kind of decided and you have to do this. You have to do this. You know, I I, I, don't, I never felt that way here in Final Fantasy 14. And yes, the game does have a little bit of a slow start and that is fair. I can honestly say that it does. But in my mind, it picked up very, very quickly between the story, between the classes, between everything that's evolving in this world. You eventually get to a point where it's like, wow, things are moving very, very fast. I can't believe that happened what is this why is this happening and it was just exciting so yes i absolutely recommend you giving final fantasy 14 a shot in 2024 not going to be disappointed i recommend you definitely coming in giving it a shot trying the game and and i, I just promise you your the hooks will be set and then you'll be sucked in there's a uh, saying that's been talked about not only in my chats 
but on my comments, it's either you don't like Final Fantasy 14 or you become a walking advertisement. I'm starting to become a walking advertisement. <laughs> if you want to sit down and watch my entirety of my playthrough of A Realm Reborn, I went ahead and documented every major step within the main story through my choices, my character, and kind of reflect on each step. You can check that video out right here. I compile it all to one so that you guys can just watch it all in one go. Aside from that, stay caffeinated, folks.